Hello friends, welcome to Science Talk. I am your host, Jim Massa. I want to discuss with you something probably most people have not given much thought to, and namely, household tissue and its role in terms of climate. It is an issue. So what's going on? Well, probably should not come as a surprise to you that trees are indeed uh, a large source of our household tissues. Well, we know that trees and the soil that they're anchored into store a lot of carbon. You cut down the trees, not only to make any paper product, whether it's from you know the paper you write on to uh, you know tissues, facial tissues, toilet paper. When you cut down the trees, you release CO2. And where do these uh, toilet papers, paper towels, facial tissues, where do they come from? Which trees? The boreal forest. Now, the boreal forest is the largest terrestrial ecosystem, or biome. Biome is a large ecosystem on the planet. It stretches pretty much in a band centered on around approximately 60 degrees north latitude, but it, it circles, goes through Alaska, Canada, Scandinavia, Russia, etc. It just rings the planet. It's the largest terrestrial biome, and this is where most of the toilet paper tissues, paper towels come from. So, as I just mentioned, they carry a lot of carbon. Cut down those trees, that carbon gets released into the atmosphere. So that's not good. So a new report that was actually um, published by the uh, NRDC, the Natural Resources Defense Council, it is an environmental organization based in the US, uh, they looked at this issue and, and they basically said North Americans, or Americans in particular, are uh, they consume a, a lot of tissue products there to use their word, voracious consumers. Even though Americans make up only 4% of the world's population, they account for more than 20% of global tissue consumption. So, what's going on? So, okay, so the boreal forest, what do we have in the boreal forest? The typ uh, typically coniferous uh, trees, trees that have cones, uh, may also find birch and aspen trees and they contain some of the uh, uh, last of the world's remaining intact forests. It's home to over 600 indigenous communities as well as boreal caribou, pine marten, and billions of songbirds. And of course you cut down the boreal forest, they can all the, their capacity to absorb CO2 is greatly uh, adversely impacted. Scientists and, and temperature increases in the world's northern regions are already having an adverse impact on boreal forests. Scientists say earthworms, which have recently been found burrowing into the boreal undergrowth, are another problem threatening the forest survival. The report says logging on an industrial scale destroys more than a million acres of boreal forest each year. It says what amounts to a tree-to-toilet pipeline has been established. That's the NRDC's own words, tree-to-toilet. With trees chopped down, converted into tissue pulp, then rolled into perforated sheets, and so forth. Another problem with the boreal forest is the, uh, the uh, spruce beetle. Now here in Alaska, I can give you, uh, because we're, we're seeing it here, interior Alaska used to be very, very cold, too cold for the spruce uh, beetle, uh, for their larvae to survive the winters. Well, interior Alaska has been warming up. Spruce beetle larvae are surviving the winters now. As a result, the spruce bark beetle is expanding their range northward out of uh, what's called the Matsu Bowl area, which includes Anchorage, Wasilla, Palmer, those uh, areas, and moving into the interior. And you can usually tell uh, what happens uh, if you go into Col uh, Colorado, for example, 
you see a lot of the uh, the coniferous trees kind of have a reddish brownish uh, appearance to them that's because the spruce bark beetle has basically destroyed the tree so it is a problem it is a major infestation and climate change is helping those uh, insects to expand in the north and create damage and problems for trees and if you damage those trees as well well those trees are going to are dying or stress they're not going to be able to absorb co2 adding to the uh, issues of co2 level in the atmosphere so what about uh, consequences for the indigenous peoples the wildlife and the uh, and global climate well the nrdc report says it's devastating the, the nrdc does say there are solutions namely that uh the, the solution can be sustainably sourced alternative fibers such as wheat straw and bamboo are available which would greatly reduce the amount of trees being uh, dropped the report says some u.s manufacturers have made efforts to use more sustainable materials in their products but the biggest in the sector, Procter & Gamble, Kimberly Clark, Georgia Pacific, still rely on virgin pulp from boreal forests for almost all of their tissue brand. Now, Georgia Pacific is a major uh, uh, distributor for building materials. You know, the two buys, uh, the, uh, the OSB, the plywood boards that are used for siding and, and for uh, structural, uh, you know, material they supply a lot of that to a lot of lumber yards the companies with the uh, the largest market shares have the power to make a significant difference for the future of our world's forests says the nrdc instead they largely adhere to decades-old tissue formulae that take buying habits and purchase only brands derived from sustainable products forests are too vital to flush away says the nrdc so um there you have it something to think about you know you know next time you you know you, know, you want to blow your nose something you grab that tissue to, and to do so you know or your next time you're in the bathroom just think about where that those materials you use and come from so you know gives you something to think about next time you blow a nose or wipe your ass thank you for your time hello folks this is jim here with science talk asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that i do please share to social media platforms that you use also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.